Go ball. Go. Carry. Carry. That's got to be arguably the biggest ball I've hit on camera. Wow. Oh my word. Today's video is absolutely mind blowing. That's huge. That's huge. Oh my word. This is ridiculous. This is one incredible head to head. Seriously, this is awesome right now. My word. I cannot believe these two are doing this. Yeah, this video is absolutely ridiculous what's gone on uh, so far and we'll see how this pans out. I'll be on the course very, very shortly. But what we're we doing, well, we've got arguably what I've been mulling over, which is two drivers, the, uh, the Stealth, the standard Stealth product from TaylorMade with a 44 and a half inch shaft in it and the Rogue from Callaway Max product. And again, I've got the shorter length shaft in it. The numbers that we're producing are absolutely phenomenal. Wait till you see what we've recorded in terms of data and we'll also get out on the course and see if these kind of things ring true out there. But right now, my mind is blown. So if you've seen last week's video, you'll know that a driver that I got fit for back in November, December time, uh, in terms of tailor-made stealth, the shaft that I've been waiting for for a couple of months actually eventually arrived. It's a Pro Force V2. It's a high launch shaft. It was a regular and it's shortened down to 44 and a half inch. I did say in the initial video that it was stiff, but this is the regular version. Now, a lot of you asked for a shorter shaft into the Rogue and would it make the same sort of differences in terms of performance as what we've seen in the Stealth. Now I can't get the exact shaft for the Callaway product, but what I have got is the RCH 45 gram regular 44 and a half inch shaft that I used really favorably in uh, the B21 drive, which was a huge fan of. So they're both exactly the same length of shaft. They're both regular shaft. There's a slight difference in the weight of them, but I'm really interested to see just how these two perform with these shafts in. And believe me, it's very impressive. Now I hit one of these two drivers, an incredible 265 yards. Yes, 265 yards with a 44 and a half inch length shaft. Work that one out. Now we all know that dry ball data is quite honestly a load of at yeah. times and means very, very little indeed. And there'll be plenty of you out there who are questioning smash factors, questioning was Trackman set at altitude, which it's not, and uh, all other reasons as to why on earth this ball has not carried 265 yards. My answer to that is quite simple. Take from it what, from it what you will all things are relative and if you want to take 5, 10, 15, 20 yards off of each of the drives and come to a conclusion that you're more comfortable with, the difference between the two it will still be the same. Right, let's come clean early in this video and declare that the club that hit the drive 265 yards and by far the longest I've ever recorded on a video on Trackman full stop was in fact the Callaway Rogue. Yeah, Rogue hit the ball 265 yards carry. The Stealth, by comparison, the longest ball eight with Stealth was 256 yards carry. And either way, they're phenomenal numbers for me. They are really, really impressive numbers. And what I want to see, and I'll give you the full data as I always do at the very end for people who want to go through it and scrutinize it, but every ball was hit pretty solid. Dispersion was good, carry was good. I put everything down to this 44 and a half inch shaft. What I want to see is out here on the golf course, can I replicate those kind of numbers and also what happens out here in reality in terms of that dispersion. So for the record round one, we'll certainly go to the road, which is this ball here. And then down on the other side of the fairway, hopefully you can see that one, is the stealth. We all know that 10, 15 yards in terms of distance means very little because the average golfer, well, my strike has got plenty of variables in it. So round one to Rogue, we'll see what happens on the next one, shall we? You see, the thing is for me, 
The biggest thing I take from this is the length of shaft has been the most important factor in this test and the biggest eye opener that I've seen in the last three or four years of testing because it's made huge, huge differences and clearly is a key factor in both of these drivers' performances, at least in my hands. Right, so next up was our second drive, and as you can see, nothing to split them. Both slightly weaker drives, not my best, trying to avoid the water, which is the other side of that black and white marker where you see the bulrushes, and uh, they're not quite on the fairway, but there's nothing to split them in terms of yardage. Has he got it? Has he got it? He's only gone and got it. Uh, ultimately, at the end of this video, the questions will remain exactly the same. Did the average golfer really hit that ball out there at 265 yards? Is Trackman a load of absolute nonsense? How many takes was it to get that put in the hole? But ultimately, one more question. Is Stealth better than Rogue? Are any of them any good? But ultimately, none of it makes a jot of difference because the only thing that matters is that you go out and try these drivers and see for yourself. Or one more question. Can a 44 and a half inch driver really help an average golfer? A lot of questions in there, but only you have the answers. Right, next two shots you're going to see me hit. First of all, with the stealth, as good as I've got. Absolutely nailed this one. Really, really long, big, high carry. Arguably, in softer conditions, this one would have reached the green, and I'll show you that very, very shortly. Rogue, again, really good strike, but a clear difference between the two in terms of ball flight. And that resulted in these two balls where they finished. Right in front of us there is the ball of the uh, Rogue, which was okay, finished short of that bunker. That's the green we're going to. But if you can see in the distance, and I mean in the distance, there's probably a good 30 yards extra carry on stealth. And like I said, if we're in drier conditions, that one's bouncing onto the green. Put it into perspective and to take our 265 yard carry from the Trackman, that flag was just over 300 yards to the green. I reckon we've carried that pretty much, well, we've definitely carried at least 265 on the fly. Trapman's never too far off, you know. Sit down, sit down. Oh, that's a decent birdie chance and not a bad wedge in, more than happy with that. And we could go on all day long comparing shot for shot here out on the course and the likelihood is the outcome would be the same. When I put a good swing on one club and a bad swing on another, the results will end up being uh, invariably different and that's what we're keeping on seeing. The only thing that is definite is that these two clubs perform incredibly well and they both perform incredibly well with a shorter shaft on. Right, so video ends here in the warmth in the van, a little bit cold today in the UK, but my evaluation and summary of these two clubs is uh, I'm a fan of both of them. I can't hide the fact. I know sometimes there's very much a sort of tailor-made camp and a Callaway camp. I sit in neither really because uh, I could arguably quite comfortably game either of these and I wouldn't complain. The one shining light for me, like I said, in uh, these recent tests, and again, I did it in last year's as well, was the shorter length shaft and greater control. Finding the middle of that club face is ultimately where the ball speed is. Yes, they're more forgiving than they used to be, but right out the middle is where it's all about. And that shorter length shaft for me seems to be that I find the centre a little bit more often. A little bit more control when you get out on the fairways. You've seen today that I'm not banging it down the middle of the fairway. There's some left, there's some right. That's always going to be down to the quality of your uh, capabilities and your swing. Let's not kid ourselves. But they just both perform really, really well. And uh, you're going to choose one or the other, if you're in the market, that is for a driver, based on some personal preferences, as I always say, and that'll be to do with the way it looks, the way it sits at a dress, those kind of things, and, and, and which camp you're sort of sitting, because I know that uh, sometimes that's the way it goes. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed that test. I did too. If you've been watching the last few weeks' videos, I am very much chopping and changing between these two drivers, and I probably still will do, to be honest with you, for the foreseeable future until I can decide on ultimately which one I think is the best suited for me on a personal level. Right, as ever, thank you for watching. Both have been available for quite some time now in, uh, in retail, so I want to know uh, who's got them, who's tried both, 
what were your differences who's into this idea of 44 and a half inch shafts give me all the feedback you want and as ever i appreciate you watching and getting involved with the channel see you all soon